All right, so the final section in our chapter is scale drawings. And anyone that's ever dealt with maps or model cars or anything along those lines knows about scale drawings. Now scale drawings enlarge or reduce an object to make the object easier to see. Examples of scale drawings include maps, floor plans, and model cars. Another great example is when you take a picture of someone on your iPhone and you look at the picture, well obviously your friend is usually bigger than what is in the phone. Um, but your friend wouldn't fit on a two inch screen so therefore you have to shrink your friend down so you can look at them on your phone or your computer. All right, so let's see how we use this. In social studies, you probably deal with the scale of a map. So let's say one inch equals 12 miles. How far is 12, four, excuse me, how far is four inches? Well, you can use a standard proportion like you learned in your previous chapter. What you just have to realize is these numbers actually mean something. So you have to make sure that your map or inch numbers are all in one level, in this case, numerator, and your miles numbers are on the other, uh, or in the denominator, or on the other side of these, uh, the fraction bar. All right, now that we have this, it's very easy to realize if we just cross multiply, we can find out that the number we're looking for is 48. 48 what? Miles. Why is it miles? Because the real world, or miles, was down here in the denominator. Could I solve it the other way by putting the miles up top and the inches down below? Yes, as long as it lined up appropriately so that one inch equaled 12 miles and four inches equaled I don't know. So let me have you guys try this one. On a map of Michigan, the distance between two cities is 3.5 centimeters. If the scale is 1 centimeter is 50 miles, what is the actual distance between the two cities? Some people may be able to figure this out with arithmetic, but setting it up in a proportion would make it nice and simple. Notice I have my centimeters on one side of the fraction bar, and I decide to make my miles go on the other side of the fraction bar. I notice I also put the 1 over the 50 because 1 centimeter was 50 miles. So if I do my cross multiplying now, I end up getting 1 times x equals 50 times 3.5, and x equals 175 miles. Any questions? All right, here you go. The distance between the two cities is now 5 centimeters. What's the distance between the two cities? Why don't you guys do this one? Try to make sure to set up the proportion, because when numbers get more complicated, I think you're going to like it. And there we go. Did you get 250? Good for you. All right, the liquid outer core of the Earth is 2,300 kilometers thick. The scale model on the layers of the Earth is a scale of one inch to 500 kilometers. How thick is the liquid core of the model? Huh. You know, that sounds confusing in the very beginning. However, if I set up the proportion, check out how easy it is. Notice, I have the model in inches, and I have the real world in kilometers. One inch equals 500 kilometers. So they line up and they match up. And the 2300 goes down here because that's also kilometers. And the I don't know is in the numerator because that's the inches. Do you see how using the proportion can help make a confusing problem suddenly look remarkably easy? So when I cross multiply, I get 500 times x equals 2300. When I divide by 500 and divide by 500 with my algebra skills, I end up getting x equals 4.6 inches. So if you want to make a really good model, you needed to have your Earth's core be 4.6 inches thick. You guys try this one. All right, I'm back. Did you set it up in the proportion? Remember, inches and kilometers. Make sure they're on the same level. Cross multiply. One step algebra. And you should get your answer. Any questions? All right, last thing of the chapter was, or the section, was scale factor. Um, I'm not talking fear factor, and that's more for your parents than for you guys. I'm not sure if that show's even still on. But scale factor. It's scale without units is called scale factor. And scale is written without units when units are identical. So this actually tells you how much you enlarge something or how much you actually shrink something. 
So let's say I have a scale, one inch equals one foot, okay? What do I want, how do I get a scale factor? Well, I need to have no units. How do I get no units? I have to turn feet into inches. One inch is one inch, but one foot is 12 inches. And you notice that inches simplify. So the scale was one inch is one foot, but the scale factor would be one to 12. We'd actually either be enlarging or we'd be shrinking this, whatever this object was, by a factor of 12. All right, so the scale model of a statue is 10 inches tall. The actual statue is 100 feet tall. What is the scale factor? Well, it's 10 inches to 100 feet. Model to real world. I could simplify it down to one inch equals 10 feet. Notice I divided by 10 and divided by 10. One inch is one inch. And 10 feet would be 120 inches. Now the inches simplify. So I get the scale factor of 120. We shrunk that by 120 times. So the scale was one inch to 10 feet because in scale, we don't care about units. The scale factor was one to two, 120 because we wanted to eliminate the units. You guys try one. The drawing has a scale of one millimeter to 20 centimeters. Uh, hint, hint, hint. 10 millimeters and a centimeter. 10 millimeters and a centimeter. All right, see if you guys can figure out the scale and the scale factor. Here we go. All right, let me back that up. So the scale would have been one millimeter is to 200 centimeters, and the scale factor is one to 200. We shrunk that 200 times, or enlarged it 200 times, depending on which way we were going. All right, check out your book. Make sure to ask your teachers if you got questions, and thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck on your chapter test.